modern tree farming technology has assured that this material continues to be available. Tree farming is the sustainable process in which trees are grown in a sequence and harvested in a sequence. Uh, forest, uh, forest companies and forest product companies, they um, own millions of acres and the acreage is gone through and they choose which trees to harvest and they project that on the need of what they will have to sell that year. Then um, after those trees are harvested, the new trees are planted and there's a cycle. So some trees are coming to maturity and ready for harvest as other trees are being planted. And that way you can maintain the, um, the supply chain of the forest yielding a sustainable crop of trees. It once took more than 80 years to grow a tree to sawmill size. Tree farming has shortened that span to 27 years. In the process, unfortunately, the tree's annular rings, which determine its tensile and comprehensive strength, are much farther apart, resulting in weaker dimension lumber. The industry has found a way to strengthen the lumber through the development of engineered lumber. Engineered lumber includes those wood structural units that have been altered through manufacturing process to make them stronger, straight, and dimensionally stable. Components are glued together in different configurations, some solid, some shaped like steel I-beams, and some truss form. These products include, one, laminated veneer lumber, LVL, including I-beams. Two, glued laminated beams or glue lambs. 3. Wood I-beams 4. Open web trusses 5. Parallel strand lumber or PSL 6. Laminated strand lumber or LSL Next section, laminated veneer lumber. Laminated veneer lumber is produced under various trade names, micro lamb, para lamb, and gang lamb. To mention three, it is produced much like plywood. First, the log is debarked and cut into eight foot sections by eight in eighth of an inch sheets of one tenth inch veneer. Once dried, defects are removed and the veneer panels are collated with phenolic glue and stacked with their ends randomly staggered. Heat press cures the layup, which is ready to be cut to a specific specified lengths and widths. Another widely used process cuts the veneer into half-inch wide strips. These strips are coated with waterproof phenolic glue and fed into a series of automated machines. The resulting billet comes out measuring 12 foot by 17 inches by 66 feet long. The billet can be cut into sizes commonly used on in the construction industry where it is used as headers, beams, and columns. LVL laminated veneer lumber products are dimensionally stable, uniform throughout, uh, uniform in size throughout, and can be nailed, drilled, and cut with ordinary construction tools. LVLs take strain easily and can be left exposed, where they become a natural part of the interior decor. Although a cross-section of LVL looks like plywood, there is an important difference, the grain orientation. The conventional plywood in conventional plywood, each veneer panel is attached at 90 degree angles to the previous layer to change the grain direction. In LVL, all of the veneer panels have their grain running in the same direction, called parallel lamination. This provides greater strength, allowing the member to carry heavy loads required of beams, headers, and truss components. Laminated beams are one and a half or one and three quarters thick with depths of five and a half inches, seven and a quarter inches, nine and a quarter inches, 11 and a quarter, 11 and seven eighths, 14 inches, 16 inches, and 18 inches. Glue laminated beams. 
Glue laminated beams are made by gluing and then applying heavy pressure to a stack of 2x4s or 2x6 lumbers to form a beam that can be up to 30 inches deep. Glue lambs are normally used for rafters, floor support beams, and stair stringers. They can be ordered in curved shapes for supporting arched roofs. Wood I-beams. Wood I-beams, flanges, also called cords, consist of laminated veneer lumber, while webs are plywood or oriented strand board, 3 8 or 7 16 inches thick. The web is fastened into grooves and flanges use waterproof glue. Wood I-beams are light, straight, and strong, and are often used as joists or rafters. They come in lengths of up to 60 feet and depths from 9.5 inches to 32 inches. Next area, open web trusses. Open web trusses are often used in place of floor joists, especially when dealing with long spans. These trusses are fabricated in factories from solid 2x4 lumber. Sometimes steel webs are used instead of wood. Depths of 14 inches and 16 inches are most common. The open webs of the trusses allow installation of pipes, wiring drains, and other mechanical systems without having to cut openings as in other types of joists. So in this case they do save some time um, because they have a crisscross pattern in which you can just pass the pipes right through. Parallel strand lumber. Parallel strand lumber, PSL, is made up by laying eight feet strands of veneer that have been soaked with adhesive. Bonded under pressure, it forms blocks of up to 66 feet long. It is used as exposed posts and beams. When pressure treated, it is suitable for outdoor use in porches, decks, and gazebos. Laminated strand lumber. Laminated strand lumber, LSL, is layered from 1 32nd by 1 by 12 inch strands of wood bonded with polyurethane adhesive. It is available in two thicknesses, one and a quarter inch, three uh, and three and a half inch. Depths vary up to a maximum of 16 inches and lengths vary up to 35 feet. Uses include the following door and window headers, rim joists in floor, and core stock for flush doors with veneer overlays. Next section, non-wood materials. The carpenter works with a number of materials other than lumber and wood-based products. Some of the more common items include metal framing members, especially joists and studs, gypsum and metal lath, wallboard and sheathing, insulating boards, bats, and loose insulation, shingles of asphalt, metal, fiberglass, tile, and concrete, metal flashing material, caulking materials, resilient flooring materials, and carpeting. Metal structure materials. Though not widely used at present for residential construction, steel framing is often found in light commercial buildings. For reasons of economy, it is finding its way into home building. Steel framing members are manufactured in various widths and gauges and are used as studs and joists. Most manufacturers use a color code to prevent different gauges from being mixed at the construction site. Prices are based on thousands of linear feet. Studs, joists, and track are manufactured by brake forming and punching galvanized coil and sheet stock. Originally designed for commercial and industrial construction, their use is now being extended to residential and light commercial structures. The studs are welded or attached to the base and the ceiling channels with screws or clips. Often wood is used for sole plates and wall plates. A typical stud consists of metal channel with openings through which electrical and plumbing lines can be installed. 
Wall surface material such as drywall or paneling is attached to the metal stud with self-tapping drywall screws. Um, what they mean by self-tapping is these screws drill a hole into the metal and then proceed to thread that hole as it tightens itself. Also worth mentioning, um, I do have uh, quite a few pictures of some steel, uh, steel frame construction and some engineered trusses. So I'll be uh, preparing a different presentation for you to see how that looks in a residential construction process. It goes very quickly. Wall surface material such as drywall or paneling is attached to the metal stud. Oh, no, I already said that. Excuse me. Some web type studs have special metal edge with a gap into which nails can be driven. Metal stud systems are often used for non-load bearing walls and partitions. Framing with steel requires some special tools. These include variable speed drills and screw gun. Hearing protection vice clamps, metal snips, metal punch, metal cutoff blade for portable saw, magnetic level, metal cutoff saw, and right angle drill. In some cases, welding equipment is also needed. Advantages of steel framing. Next section. In general, steel framing is more affordable than wood framing. Steel members are normally straight and consistent, unlike wood, which warps, swells, and may have knots and other imperfections. There is also little limitation in the length of the steel frame. Joists can be manufactured in lengths of up to 40 feet. The disadvantages of steel framing. Steel has some disadvantages. The standard stud for non-load bearing walls, 25 gauge, is flimsy. Care must be taken when handling them. Steel edges are sharp and may cause injury, even if hemmed track components are used. Um, so the thinner the gauge, or depending on the speed at which these steel pieces are produced, can leave burrs. Burrs are like razor sharp edges that can cut you, so I highly recommend using leather gloves when handling metal framing. Some carpenters do not use steel studs on outside walls because they are poor insulators and can reduce R values by as much as 50%. Finally, installing blocking, sheathing, and siding takes longer with steel studs than wooden studs. Um, so when they talk about the R value, they're actually talking about the conductivity of the material. Metal is a conductor and wood is an insulator. So by using metal, you can actually lose the heat that you're trying to keep in the house to keep it at a temperate climate. So be, uh, consider, consider that aspect of it. Uh, and maybe don't use it in the exterior walls, maybe only use it in the interior walls. Metal framing connectors. At one time, all wood to wood connectors in a wood frame were made with nails. While this practice is continues, and produces adequate strength for the structure, metal connectors are faster to install and improve uniformity and strength. Basically, metal framing connectors are stamped brackets or strapping designed to make wood to wood or wood to masonry or wood to concrete connections. Unless the connector is designed to be exposed and decorative, it is made from galvanized metal in various thicknesses. Strapping or ties. Strapping or ties are designed to hold parts of the frame together and are often used to quake-proof structures, tying frames to foundations and roofs to walls. Straps are perforated so that they can be fastened with nails without drilling holes first. This is exceedingly important in California where we have a lot of earthquakes. You definitely want to use metal bracing to hold your construction project together. Different types of metal bracing is actually um, inside the cement uh, or wet set into the cement and then it has even more structural integrity. 
protecting your house from not falling down in an earthquake. Hangers. Hangers connect the end of one framing member to another. Hangers are used where floor or ceiling joists intersect another framing member, such as a beam. Designs are available for either solid lumber or laminated lumber. Fasteners for connectors. Fasteners used for metal connectors should be able to withstand shear stresses placed on them by the connectors. Nails or screws can be used. Some builders secure the fasteners with drywall screws, which penetrate wood quickly and cannot be easily withdrawn. However, drywall screws have little shear strength and are not recommended. Generally, only nails are to be used. Figure, uh, bolts may be sometimes used. Nail length vary with the type of connector. Manufacturer's literature should be consulted also. Mm. So they're talking in this instance about not using um, drywall screws because although they're very fast and cheap, they don't, um, they don't stand up when they're twisted. So they'll just snap. Nails, on the other hand, are much stronger and made to withstand shear strength. A shear, uh, shear strength is where one, um, one piece is moving one direction and the other piece is moving the other direction. If a nail is in that position, then it will not be able to move. If a drywall screw is in that position, the drywall screw will just snap. It's not engineered to be rigid in that way. Next section, metal lath. A uh, metal lath looks a lot like um, chicken coop material and um, it's uh, used in stucco applications. Where stucco is the exterior wall finish, metal lath is attached to the sheathing as the base for the stucco plaster. The lath comes in rolls and is attached with staples. Uh, I'm gonna say that the lath is actually connected with spaced nails. Um, I, don't, I don't agree with that statement.